Hey, Flip Geometry, how you doing? We are diving into another lecture in Chapter 7. Today we're going to teach you how to find the area of other quadrilaterals that you may or may not have ever done before. So let's jump right into it. Alrighty, so a, um, a trapezoid. The, uh, the area of a trapezoid is calculated as one-half times the height times the sum of the bases. So a trapezoid, remember, is something where you have two parallel lines and two non-parallel lines. The parallel lines are the bases, and the, um, the area is found by calculating the height and the sum of the bases and then multiplying by one-half. Now look at this. One half times the sum of two objects, that's the average, right? So you could also see this as the average of the bases times the height. Um, you can think of it as if, you know, you're doing a rectangle, base times height, but the rectangle can't decide how long the base is. And so you average out the two bases and then multiply it by the height. If that helps you, great. If it doesn't help you, then the formula is one half times the height times the sum of the bases. And don't worry about that whole average thing. But that's the way I think of it. It's the average of the bases times the height. All right, that's the area of a trapezoid. Let's do an example. Here we have a trapezoidal popcorn box side. Because I know you've always wanted to know how many square inches is that popcorn box side. I know, I know, it's a, it's a question of the, of the ages. Um, here we're going to answer it for you, finally, right? Um, we have a popcorn box six inches tall, and the bottom of the uh, popcorn box side measures 3.25, and the top measures 4.25, three and a quarter, four and a quarter. You can look at this two different ways. You can say, well, what's the average of three and a quarter and four and a quarter? And you would find that the answer to that, the average of three and a quarter and four and a quarter, if you were to average them out, is three and three quarters, 3.75. And you could say 3.75 times six and get the height uh, times the average of the bases, and it'd be 22.5. Or you could just use the formula raw the way it is, as the example here has it, 1 half times 6 times 4.25 plus 3.25, and then you do all the addition and the multiplication, you get 22.5. You get the same answer, however you want to think of it. I like to think of the average thing that helps my brain, but if it doesn't help your brain, then fire the idea, because we're all about helping your brain, okay? And now the area of a kite. And a kite, remember, it's not just that thing at the end of your string. It is, in fact, a geometric shape. Uh, a kite has, just to review, two congruent consecutive sides and another two congruent consecutive sides, but not congruent opposite sides. That's a kite. Okay. The area of a kite is one-half the product of the lengths of the diagonals. One-half times diagonal one times diagonal two. Now, if you want to know why, think about this as two triangles, okay? This triangle here and its congruent triangle here. All right, so they're congruent triangles, and so it's twice the area of that triangle, which is one-half times base times height. One-half times base times height. The base is just one of the diagonals. The height is half of the other diagonal. So one half times base times height is one half times the one diagonal times half of the other diagonal. And there's two of these, right? Because it's two triangles. So this big, long, ugly thing, two times one half is just one. So it's one times the first diagonal times one half of the second diagonal. And if I just, for ease of use, this is multiplication, the one doesn't matter. Fire the one, move the one half over here so it's easier to look at, and there I am at my equation. One half times diagonal one times diagonal two. I just wanted to show you why that's the way it is. It's two congruent triangles that are both one half times base times height, and the height in this case is one half d2. So you plug it all in and simplify, and that's how you get there. I just wanted you to see that, and again, in case that helps. So that's the area of a kite. Let's find the area of this kite. Now, they're being tricky because they're giving us 115 millimeters, 13 centimeters, 30 centimeters, 115 millimeters. Look at that. Not the same unit. Sneaky, cheeky monkey. Um, we have to first convert the measures into like units. So 
115 millimeters, 13 centimeters. Let's go to centimeters all around. Remember, there are 10 millimeters in a centimeter. So 11.5 centimeters here, 11.5 centimeters there, 13 centimeters and 30 centimeters. I need this whole length because that's diagonal one. So 13 plus 30 is uh, 43. And then 1 half times uh, D1 and D2. Now, this is 11.5 uh, centimeters. The whole thing then would be twice that. So the whole thing is 23 centimeters. And this whole thing is 43 centimeters. So it's 1 half times 23 times 43, which is 49.4, 49, 494, I can talk, 0.5 square centimeters. Um, they, they made this a lot more complicated than it need to be. If you can just figure out how long this is, how long that is, multiply them together, multiply by one half, you're good. Okay. Let's look at the theorem for the area of a rhombus. A rhombus is very, very much like a kite. As a matter of fact, except that the opposite sides are congruent, a rhombus kind of is a kite because you have congruent consecutive sides. You just also have congruent opposite sides, right? So it looks a lot like the formula for a kite. Matter of fact, it's the same thing. One half times the diagonal one times diagonal two. Um, and so here you have a rhombus, but you can look at this as a regular kite, right? Consecutive congruent sides. Consecutive congruent sides. It's just that the opposite sides are also congruent. So the same formula works. One half times the uh, so the product of the diagonals. Okay, exactly the same reasoning as the kite. You can look at this as two congruent triangles. That is eight by three, and then uh, you would use all the same logic and the proof that I just showed you to figure out why this is the same formula. Okay, this example is interesting. A rhombus is a kite, and it's also a parallelogram. So the formula for the area of a parallelogram works. The formula for the area of a kite works. And now we're going to use both formulas to solve for an unknown uh, attribute of this rhombus. So here we have a rhombus that has a side length of 5 and an unknown height. But the diagonals are, um, are given for us. Half of this diagonal is 4. Half of this diagonal is 3. I know that it's not drawn very clearly. Because when I first looked at this, I actually had to re-record this slide because I thought that the four was this whole thing and the three was this whole thing. Bad drawing. But they intend in the example for it to just be half of that diagonal. So if this is four, then the whole thing is eight. And if this is three, then the whole thing is six. So one half times the diagonal one times diagonal two, one half times eight times six. Eight times six is 48. Half of that is 24. The area of this rhombus, according to the kite formula, is 24. But it's also a parallelogram. So if the formula for a parallelogram also works base times height and the for the area is 24, then 24 equals 5h. And I can tell you that the height is 4.8. Okay? Any questions with that? We'll go through it in class tomorrow. Let's look at another example. We're going to find the area of a quadrilateral WXYZ where we have given coordinates. Well, what we need to do for a quadrilateral like this, first we have to determine what kind of quadrilateral it is, and then we've got to use slope and distance formulas to get the information that we need, and then we can calculate the area. So let's watch this happen. We're going to see that it is in fact a rhombus. We can just look at the diagram here and see that this point is directly over this point, and that this point is directly across from this point. So the diagonals meet at a 90 degree angle, um, you can see that here, obviously, the 4, 1, so the, the y value is 1, and the y value here is 1. The x value here is 1, and the x value here is 1. So they're uh, perpendicular diagonals, and so we know that this is a rhombus. Then we need to get the distances here. So x, z, this diagonal has a distance of 8, and wy, this diagonal, has a distance of 6. And so we can see that we have uh, 6 times 8 times 1 half would give me an area of 24 square units. All right? If you have any questions about that, let me know, and we'll deal with it tomorrow.
That's all she wrote, folks. I will see you tomorrow in class. Until then, God bless you. Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.